Okay, hey, welcome to the stream. Um for for Yellow Cat Games for Dashing Dodgems. Um today we are going to be working on several things. I have to make a bunch of um icons basically there's a uh, a load of previews that have to be built um for our car parts switcher that i'm going to be working on i'm also going to be working on the um you know, like the emoticons a bit more um though i think i might skip out on that a bit today um and I'll be working on a new piece of um, sort of like concept art. Um, there's a certain area that we have now, which uh, has quite a different art style from the uh, the rest of the game, and um, or different art style. It's the same art style, but it's a very different setting. So there's there's some some other stuff going in there that uh, that we're gonna be be working on today to kind of get that get that in there um, as every time if at any point you have some questions about what I'm doing or about the game or um, or whatever or you have something that you'd like to add or you know you have a piece of feedback or whatever uh, be sure to let me know in the chat and I'll be uh, I usually react to whatever's going on in the chat like instantaneously um unless like i'm when i'm really into a certain task I'll, i i might uh, react a bit slow but um yeah let's just get started on the on the first thing here so um here we have a little scene set up where i do the screenshots for all the uh for all the car parts so victor our 3d artist made this scene that contains all our cars. So let me just switch on a different car. So this one, for instance. Um, and uh, our programmer Lance is right now building a system that allows you to swap out the different parts. So for instance, you get to take out this front part and then put in a different uh, different front that you know makes a car maybe look like this oh. as long as I also switch on the face in the back there we go um, this looks a bit weird right now because I, I tried out a tune shader for um, for the icons because we have a menu that allows you to switch out these parts right um, but let's put that back on standard shader um, that menu requires a lot of previews. So um, we're kind of looking at how those icons would, what they would look like in game. So we could just do, um, look at this part here. We could, actually I could show you the folder with all the different previews that we have. Um, so here, here's kind of what we're, what we're doing. We could have it just look like this where it has you know, where it's just a preview or a preview with an outline or a white background or, you know, we just have all these different uh, variations of this. And then we're going to try them out in the actual menu and uh, make our decision based on that. Um, let's see, what else am I going to be working on? Yeah, so actually, I think that these previews that I have right now, I, uh, before the break, I was working on another one i wonder if i have this one but with an outline uh, i do not so let me just quickly make an outline for this one and then i'm going to stick those into the project somewhere so that our, our developer can start working on that uh there's no music today by the way because um it's a bit of a struggle because even the channels that I use sometimes to have music play on my stream, sometimes the, the algorithm 
thinks that there's a bit of copyrighted music in there and then it just mutes part of my video and I really want to um, avoid that. So I suggest if you do want to have music, just kind of, you know, switch on Spotify and play some, some low volume music your, yourself because uh, I, uh, I don't want to contend with, uh, with Twitch's weird algorithms, right? So that's uh, FGH. Um, so that would be I, right? I would say the F G H I. Yeah. Um, let's give these proper naming as well. F G H. Okay. And then as soon as this one is saved, so now we have a bunch of variations. And I'll grab the project. Um, I set up a new thingy for the for the stream text to lance um, that allows me to do or that uh, that makes OBS follow the screens. It's gonna save a lot of hassle uh, with me having to hit a shortcut to change screens here. Let's see where we're gonna put these. They're gonna be in content. What texture is that? Zoom, yeah. And we'll just put them in UI and then copy text. And just stick them in there. I also switched to Git Kraken instead of um, Source Tree that we used to use. Because it just looks a bit more awesome. <laughs> um, and the usability is a bit better. I think I might have to discard this material. Um, yeah, because there's nothing in there that I want to keep. So let's discard for that one. Wait, hold on. Let me just stage all of these. Come on. Except for that one. Yes, please. And we have the block. That's fine. It's my own camera. That's fine. That's fine. That's just a white material. That's fine. That's mine. These are all the textures. That's fine, fine. That's new material, that's also fine. Yeah, okay. So we added um, car preview and car preview setup. Added preview camera, uh, prefab, added preview images, or yeah, I'm just just quickly. All right, let's commit those changes. Pull, pull and push. All right. Um, next. Uh, we have to tell our dev that the where the images are. So I'll do that in the streaming channel.
Okay, so that's, um, I guess that's that task done. And we'll move on to the next one. Um, quickly grab our board. Let's close those out. Um, yeah, so there's still a bit of the texture. And this can go back to plants because my part is done. And I mean, I guess I have to kind of make previews for the back as well, but I, I just want to know what style we're going we're going to be going for before I commit to like making previews of all the the car parts. Um, So we'll we'll get back to that later. In the meanwhile, I can work on an animation for the um, the emoji. Okay, so here we have a sheet full of um, kind of like character expressions based on certain situations and based on um, player choice, basically. So these react to things that happen in the scene. Um, so if you get hit and you fall underwater, you're... you're Kind of like your character progress, uh, character portrait. There we go. We'll display this one, or if you just get bumped by someone, it will display this one, right? These are based on player choice. So um, we have a little in game menu that also needs a design, by the way. I might get onto that later as well. Um, and you can choose to display one of these based on um, well, what you want to communicate to, to the other people who are playing. Now we're adding today, we're adding a new one to this list, which is um, this one, uh, which kind of just grab these. That's a lot of separate layers. Um, there we go. Which will be displayed if you if you 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 charge your your energy. So if you pick up a battery, um, energy charge. Oh no, it doesn't fit in the box. Fixed. Okay. Um, and I actually did an animation for this one last week that I'd really like to experiment a bit further with. I think I clicked the wrong file. Open the timeline here. So that's the 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 animation, and that would be playing um, in the part of of um, the screen where the character portrait is usually displayed. Um, and it's a bit much, I think. Um, I don't know, maybe we want to get rid of the eyes at least. I think those might be on a separate layer actually, which would make our life a lot easier. Yeah, so that's that layer. and We'll just add some normal eyes there. My favorite thing about animating in Photoshop is making very short animations and then whenever I add a layer, <laughs> Photoshop is like, oh, we're just going to make this layer last like a minute. 
It's still just on one frame though. There we go. Okay. Should have an empty layer. Yep. So I'll just get some eyes in there. Don't need a lot of detail in there because it's going to be like super tiny in game anyway. Right. Okay. Um. Let me just quickly show you guys what I'm talking about here when I um, when I talk about these emoji. Let's go into the actual game scene. There we go. He. I think the lighting changed here. Oh no, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I mean I know that the, the grading doesn't pop in until you actually play the scene, but usually it it's a bit brighter even in even ungraded, but um I must have been mistaken about that. I thought it was brighter anyway. Okay, so we don't have a car right now because I forgot or didn't switch the um debug mode on I'll just do that in here real quick I did switch the debug mode on then why are we not spawning a car maybe I have to go through the join scene once first let's quickly play this one spawn in some cars as soon as it's loaded that is one This isn't working at all. Something is broken. Let's try that again. This is uh, interesting. Did I move the spawn points? Fairly certain I didn't. I also need to change out this loading screen. There's plenty of work to do. Well, this is busted. Very curious to know. Oh, right. Lance is working in the join scene today. Um, so I'm guessing we're, we're moving from... Um, from one system to another. I think he's working on the the input right now. That means I can't really, I mean, uh, the good news is it means the game isn't broken. It's just being worked on. Uh, bad news is I can't show you the emotion, uh, emotion system right now. Um, well, that's fine. Basically, there is a, a little bubble in the kind of like the corner of the screen that shows you where the other players are and these faces these emoji are displayed um in that bubble uh, and that's what we're working on today Just slightly move this stuff around a bit because i keep hitting the microphone with my pen that must be annoying you to you guys okay. I mean uh, maybe I need like a that's a bit intense right Maybe if I give a bit more um, like direction to it, where it just kind of um, 
circles around his head a bit instead of just randomly going all over the place that it actually has a a direction that it goes in and I want to use a square sketching brush for this I think so round one makes these well rounded edges so to say and the square one gives me a bit more lightning lightning-ish shapes I don't really want to have it go around or I don't know just try out some things see where we where we land oh yeah that's a bit annoying though it's gonna I have the old stuff in every frame still. Could make a new video layer, but I mean, this will this will work. We'll have this one move forward, kind of decay on that side. Let that one move forward. Just kind of looking for shapes that look random enough, if that makes any sense. I'm looking to include some specific direction in these. Uh, these lightning bolts or just have them decay wherever they are maybe we'll just leave the rest of the frames blank so that it kind of does this lightning thing around it for a while and then then it doesn't Let's see what that looks like without pinion skinning It's a bit fast, but it's going to be slower, or we can play it. We can play it slower in uh, in Unity. I think I'll just quickly take a look. Um, in Unity to see what it looks like if we uh, if we actually turn it into an animation there. If I sound or look a bit tired, <laughs> it's because I absolutely am um, lightning head. Um, a new semester started at the school where I work at, and um, my it's a big file though. 
my schedule is absolutely atrocious. I, I already talked to my uh, executive about it, and it's uh, it's going to change in a couple of weeks. But we can't just change my schedule right now uh, because the students will suddenly not like have a class uh, less. So. So in about three weeks, I'll uh, I'll have a bit more time, and until that time, I'll just be dead tired all the time. Um, so right now we're um, exporting it as an image sequence, which we can load into a program that I have that's called Fluid, which allows me to turn a image sequence into a sprite sheet. So um, let's grab the images. It should be a lightning head. There we go. So there's all our that's our image sequence. Let's drop that. Sorry, drop that in here. And then we can glue. And now we have a um, very large sprite sheet. I actually should have. Um, I can take the sprite sheet actually and just. Reduce that in size. And also, we'll put this on a. I could have done this in Gluey, but I always like to kind of. At least if this is a. That's an uneven number. Hold on, we'll do that in Gluey. Just to make. Uh, Two columns. Oh, not five, four. Yeah, that should be better. And we can toss that into Photoshop and reduce its size a bit. So it's absolutely massive now. Doesn't have to be. And I could have um, obviously cut out a lot of this uh, in between space as well. That should have uh, that should have helped. But I mean, it's just for a for a preview, and then for the final asset, it might do something that might be a bit small, but. It'll live. Um, we'll just toss that into, into here. Animated. Oh, test. I always make sure that I include the word test somewhere in whatever file I'm using to test things, just so that if I ever want to like if we clean up the the project at any point we can just you know search for test and remove anything that has that word in it uh, or at least that's the that's the idea and then we'll probably find out that we're still using a lot of the test stuff and then you know that'll that'll break the game and it'll be a sad day indeed uh, let's see where did I Right, it's this one. I didn't recognize because it it's so broken, like the transparency. If you don't, if you haven't set it to uh, to this yet. All right, we'll go here, and we have um, oh, sorry, I have to set this one to multiple. It's either three by four or four by three, and I I never kind of wanna. Okay, it's faster for me to just kind of try one of the two out and see what it what it results in, than trying to remember what a row is and what a column is. It just for some reason that just doesn't register in my brain. <laughs> uh, so this is fine. This is sliced. We can actually put that uh, in the game somewhere now. Let me just quickly think. Um, 
probably just want to grab um, did I make any changes I don't think so just open it right yeah let's not save that out I have a special scene set up for animating uh, UI elements which is this one um, or like animating UI elements just for building anything uh, UI related which it, these icons are um, Good afternoon, Pringles man. Thank you for joining. Um, so we're going to be working this one here today as well. And I'm kind of thinking about whether I should build this on a canvas or in world space. And I think we'll build it in the canvas. Took me a while. Um, let's. I'm just kind of thinking about you know what are we going to be using it for, and um, I think it's going to be on a canvas in the end. I'm not entirely sure, but you know even if I build it on this canvas, we can all just always just pull it out. But it's gonna gonna be a bit more work if I build it in a canvas and then we have to put it on a different canvas. It's always kind of a hassle. Um, and a do charge animated head test and we'll toss the image on there yeah let's set native size please thank you now we just have to um to animate that i'll just grab this one Charged head test. Okay. And then we can just grab these. Um, right. Toss them in there, right? And then we have a super fast playing animation. Also, for some reason, offsets the position. Not sure why it does that, though. So there's a... That one. And then another one. That is not supposed to happen. That might have something to do with the the re resolution that when it resizes, it might think that one pixel, like one time it might resize it to a certain certain pixel, and the other time it might resize it to a slightly different pixel. That is like that is a big big leap, um, and I don't think it's the it's the slicing. Shouldn't be. Well, that's weird. It is the slicing. Look at that. Why would it? Look, the cells are overlapping. Here too. It's just not making a clean grid. Unity is just kind of fucking around here. Uh, wow, I've never seen that happen before. Look at that. All right, let's see if we can... It's done that I have to manually
they're not even the same size either it didn't do a clean distribution of I've never seen that happen before and I have no idea why is it because of the resolution is it just that it snaps to whole pixels or no because this one doesn't even snap to the same line as the other one like it can't if I snap it that's really annoying that is really annoying so maybe if I crop this one a bit neater um, let's say one by one and then export a slightly larger file right so nothing gets up to the bounding box right now um, maybe that'll that'll fix this but I have to say that I've never never seen that happen before where it just completely messes up on the I mean the 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 automatic slicing usually fucks up like I've never I don't think I've ever Because, see, it always fucks up, fucks up somewhere. <laughs> um, but the grid usually just kind of works. But it doesn't now. Okay. Well, I mean, it might be that I uh, that the asset just isn't clean enough. I I I mean, this this happens when you take shortcuts, I guess. Um, real quickly, close those out. Yep. Get rid of these. And we were exporting from here. A25, I guess that's fine. And we have our image sequence, we've got Fluid. Sorry for making you guys watch this twice, it's not the most interesting. Uh, I mean, maybe glue it messed up on the columns, but I have to say I haven't seen it do that yet. It's fine here, like you don't see it move at all. So that's fine. We know that that's the correct thing. So it's probably from resizing it with um, with Photoshop where it put some pixels, like it has to make a choice or something, right? Um, This one, uh, Bob Energy Head Test. I know I keep giving it different file names. Doesn't really oops, doesn't really matter too much as long as I include the word test. Then I know that I'll have to uh, do something with it later anyway. Um, Bob. Did it just not import it? There it is. It's the wrong folder, mate. Uh, 
Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's better. And we'll toss that. There. Set native size. So. Wow! Oh yeah, I didn't resize it at all. So that's huge. Um, that's fine. And let's grab that animation and toss the new frames in there. Okay. Cool. That's not all the frames. Oh, it is. It's weird because I see the loop so quick. Right, okay. Come on. But let's play it slightly quicker. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. What do you think, guys? Does this indicate that he has picked up some energy and he's ready to come and kill you or do we need to make it more extreme and also make his eyes glow and stuff like that I think that if I saw this in an icon I'd be like okay this guy is ready to do some damage um I mean, yeah, I guess that's a pretty successful test. I'd love to see this in game, but I guess I kind of have to wait for the, the input system, new input system to be done before we can really check it out. But yeah, I'll just quickly make a GIF, share it with my uh, the coworkers. Let's say 350 by 350. Record. Great, wonderful. Click the thing. <laughs> Hold on. What did I do? That's interesting, but weird. Why did it? Okay, just click here once and that removed the sprite from the, the component. Okay, um, let's see, let's look at this straight on. And I also kind of don't want that super ugly default skybox to be there. I might make, um, so do have another sky, this one. I might just do this actually for this scene. Have a nice clean gray background. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's play that. Grab the screen to give. Record that. Just make sure to have at least one loop in there. Now, welcome to the game. Spot the loop. Here it is. That's the same frame, right? Yeah. And we'll delete all the frames from here. So this should be one clean loop of the entire animation.
and I think we'll stay under 10 MBs because it's so short. Bob Power. Um, so it's so small and so short that usually I do some tricks to make my gifts smaller, but they should stay, yeah, well under 10 MBs, so I don't have to do hold any fancy tricks. Um, Right, where do I, I think I'm stuck in a media, right? Gifts, pop power, there we go. All right, we'll just send these. And chip power. So now, uh, I should have cut out some frames from this bit because it's standing still for a while. <laughs> uh, let's do that again, pretend it never happened. It's right from here, right? Yeah. There we go. Just save that over the same. Same file, and we'll toss that in here, and we'll make the same bad joke. Just like it never happened. Cool. Okay. So that's the thing I wanted to do, and we are done with the other thing that I wanted to do. So now there's two tasks left on my late um, which is the texture for I'll just save this for now so I was I actually spent a lot of time working on this uh, last week as well and we're still not quite there the midpoint so it's uh, the texture for these sides right so I like the idea of you know including this color in the texture here and then making a bit of an edge here uh, I can't show you right now because you know, we work on the input system so I can't drive around but um, like from the viewing angle of the game itself which is sort of like this I guess um, it kind of looks like it has a certain depth to it because of that edge there so that's 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 nice um, I could work on that or I could work on the piece of concept art for the new join scene by the way I'd love to actually show you guys the new join scene um, So this is what Victor is working on, and it's quite uh, quite intense, um, and it has to do with a bit of lore that we're introducing into the game. Where, let's see if I can, yeah, I can just get rid of this. Um, I can save this. Also, get rid of it. And then that one is already saved. Okay. And I'll just grab the gods that we have. So the lore that we're incorporating is that you are brought into this, this bumper car realm <laughs> um, by these bored gods. And they, they transport you into this realm because they're bored and they want to see you um, fight other people. So, um, and it's also based on a bunch of like super old concept art from right when we started working on the game. Let's see if I can find some of the images. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's based on 
these images that I did right at the start of the project when we didn't really know where the game was headed that much yet. Um, as you can see, it's like a, a gold upgrade. We don't even have gold in the game anymore. But um, but the visual style of these rocks, I mean, I, I, um, Victor uh, kind of used them as an inspiration for this scene. And then this morning on Twitter, I saw an image that had kind of like a stone statue half sunk into the earth. And I immediately had to think about this scene that Victor had done um, that kind of has this dark feel to it with all these uh, rocks and all these, like this is a straight reference to the gods that we have um, with these kind of like these icons on here, which are going to become um, the icons that each god has. So this guy has like the square, that guy has a spiral, and that guy has like a box. Um, and they're going to be these icons um, so that each of these represents one of the gods. And then also they look like fingers. Cool. Um, and I think, you know, having kind of like a semi-submerged god in here would be, would be pretty cool to look at. So we're going to do a bit, bit of uh, concept art for that. I might actually to think of it grab a screenshot of this and do a bit of a paint over that might be might be cool if i would give a percentage what would it be i don't like to think in percentages because <laughs> um i don't think that's how it works with uh with game production because it's it's so dependent on where we go and like i could say 20 percent and then at some point we decide that we want to cut a lot of shit and then suddenly that 20 percent turns into 40 percent or we decide or we get the opportunity to work on it for longer or m work more days on it and then we decide to do more features and more levels and then suddenly that 20 percent turns into 10% or 5% because we're adding so much more stuff. So um, we do have, so, so we don't, I don't really think in, in, in percentages uh, per se, because they're, they're, they lock you down in a certain sense. I'd say though that we need to release this game somewhere in the coming year, year and a half. And we've been working on it for a year. Um, so time wise <laughs> we've burned through through half the time that we that we have um but that also depends so for instance if somebody were to ring my doorbell tomorrow because i we work on this for two days in a week right so there's three of us working on it for two days in a week um if tomorrow someone would ring my doorbell and just give me like two hundred thousand euros like here you go Go build that game, you crazy bastard. I'd be like, okay, thanks. And suddenly that one and a half year development time can be cut in half because we can work more days. Like we don't have we don't have to stick with our day jobs anymore. Or um, we can decide to make the game twice as big. So instead of, you know, finish it, finishing it twice as fast, we can also, you know, stay with it for the same amount of time and make it twice as big but so that's it's so dependent on many factors which is also why we work in an agile um system right so we we make decisions for maybe two or actually exactly two months in advance right so we, we go and, and we say okay this is what we're going to be working on for the coming two months and then we have some long-term deadlines but those are deliberately vague so that we can kind of you know continuously look at our situation and base uh, our, our production schedule on that so um yeah that's kind of like how far <laughs> how far we are i guess uh, i mean another way to measure how far we are would be to look at our backlog and the amount of issues that we've that we've finished and closed out which is a, a fair list um, compared to the amount of issues that we still have open as soon as GitLab will allow me to 
scroll that way. Uh, and then it would look like we're very far because we only have 27 issues in the backlog and we have like 84 in the done pile and then we have you know around 30 in our current sprint backlog but you know i think this entire list of issues up here have been added while we were working on this sprint so these are all tasks that we decided that we want to you know do in a different sprint um, so we add them in our backlog so that next time we have a sprint planning you know they, they, they go from the backlog into the sprint backlog so you know there's 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 your super long super vague answer I guess uh, when do you think you get a certain release date I don't know I yeah um ask me again in a year i guess um also very dependent on whether or not we're going to work with a publisher um because a publisher has a very a fairly large say uh in that or if we work with uh like if we, if we would work if we were to work very closely with um with nintendo like if we were to work with them directly they have a fair say in something like that. Or if we decide to do something like crowdfunding or with a, an angel investor, you know, they all get to have a say in that. But, you know, somewhere somewhere in the vicinity of, um, of one and a half years from now I'd, would be my, uh, my guesstimate. All right, I wanted to have a screenshot and I'm looking at angles here. Yeah, I can do something like that. Just grab that. And I think I'll do several versions, maybe two or three. I'm thinking about which god. Um, I mean, it's it's either going to be that guy or that guy. Oh, we cut this one, by the way. He's gone. So, you know, say goodbye to swan, swan god, uh, <laughs> I guess. Because um, we wanted to have five gods in there because of the analogy with the uh, with the hand here. Um, the fingers and this guy doesn't really have the same shape language as the other ones because they're all kind of square and bulky and uh, this guy's more kind of like elegant and you know and Victor thought it looked like a lizard and I thought it looked like a swan so it wasn't really too clear what it was either I mean none of these I mean what the hell is this even right but this guy very clearly references something but then doesn't really make it clear what he references so we got rid of it um, I might I love the the chicken god here because <laughs> it's dumb but this design so very clearly references something while none of the others really do that I might have to kind of get rid of it but I don't want to because I like it so that's uh I mean, that's the advantage of, if I were to work for, let's say, an art director or something, he'd probably tell me to do a, a different design for this head here. He'd probably do, tell me to do different designs for a lot of these things, but... Um, 
I work for myself. So or I work with other guys and we work with our with ourselves, so um we don't have to answer to anyone, which is cool. Okay, let's see if we can put one of those gods in here somewhere. No, I already kind of had this idea for the um, well, this backdrop could be slightly lighter. It's so dark. Bit of brightness in there. Something like that. The mallet is looks like he made the card himself to then put the colors in. You mean uh, this guy? Yeah, he was the first. It's like I always kind of like put him above the others as well, kind of like he's the uh, the main god, or and he's actually the guy that I want to put in here as well. Um, so I want to have that like a handle stick out of the ground. Need a bit more. And I kind of want to put his hand around it as well. And then make that whole thing uh, disappear underground. And then we can put the like the top half of it somewhere nearby as well. It's kind of curved, right? Yeah, with a weird. Oh, that's a bit too square. So it has a weird. circle design going on and it curves down to a narrower bit I should stick this image in pure ref instead of having it up here because I keep having to if you guys don't know pure ref it is one of the best ways to spend I think it's like ten dollars uh, and it's a kind of like standalone program that lets you just paste images in there and it'll just stay on top of whatever other software you have um, you have running so um, I can just toss my ref in there that's why it's called pure ref um, and it won't ever leave my view and you can just toss whatever like you can toss a bunch of images in there you can have it be really big or really small um, just whatever you want and it's really easy to like kind of like move around and it just works really really well with uh, either digital painting or 3d modeling and I believe yeah I believe it, it, it allows like 10 euros which is uh, nothing really. So there's a. Just kind of have to just construct this thing, kind of like runs down. Hmm. 
It's free, really? Yeah, I know. I've had it for ages. Most of my plugins cost 10 years. That's why I said... Uh, uh, If it's free, then it's even better, right? I mean, that's pretty close to the handle, actually. Okay. Now let's. Um, well, you're about to see another one of my favorite plugins called Lazy Nazumi Pro. Which is a, um, I don't know, I'd maybe call it a uh, brush, not a, it's kind of like a ruler. <laughs> um, hold on, let me, before I, there we go. Um, or it's a, it's a ruler, but also it, it helps you get smoother lines, and it also helps you when it works at least how can I not move sometimes it just kind of I'm just not allowed to move the the center point which is new to me. Can't interact with any of the buttons at all. Let me just re reboot that thing real quick. Every time I show off a tool that I have on stream, for instance, uh, last stream I kept having trouble with the uh, Hierarchy Pro, that guy. Um, just every time I show up a tool on stream, it absolutely has to, has to bug out on me. I now manage to also crash the entirety of Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, life. Uh, that's somebody. Mm -hmm. Oh, pull for pillar test. Yeah. As soon as I, there we go. Good God, it is absolutely broken. Yeah, 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 I'll pull, I'll pull. Okay. Um. Oh God. Oh, because I have to merge. Okay. Um that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. That's okay, that's okay, and... That's just a meta file, so that's okay. We can just stage all this, and we can go... Um, Bob Energy... Tests... Changes... Oh, cool. Okay. Ooh, that is cool though.
Oh, he made it. Uh, he made the cracks like that. I mean, it'd be cool if you could make them um, emissive. I wish you could. Should be able to see if we. I can spawn in here actually. Instantly taken down. <laughs> animated. Oh, that's not animated, that's just a physics object. Look at that. <laughs> Look at it go. Okay, sorry. Um. Wait, where's the spawn point though? It's up here. Do these not have collision? Oh well. Um, that's pretty cool. Those are cool too, the stairs. It's all a bit shiny though. I'd make them. I mean, just the rim shader guess right yeah this looks cool though Yeah, that's pretty cool. We we could make this into an emissive map if we can, cause yeah, we can with this shader, right? Cause this is the yeah, this is the standard shader. But we can't combine it with the rim shader unless we we edit the shader. That's pretty cool. Okay, um, back to painting. Sorry. So, oh yeah, we were gonna try and make Lazy Nazumi I'll be completely bugged out. I mean, it works as it should as a ruler. I just don't get to um, <laughs> I don't get to edit any of the Of the guides here for some obscure reason. All right, well, we'll have to freehand it. So this is now, it now stopped saving me time, and it's now just costing me time, which is never a good, I thought it never a good thing for a plugin. So there's like a circle, and I guess it goes something like down to there. It's a bit much. Like something like that, and then the grass and stuff stops it there. Something like that, close enough. And then there's another bunch of grass there. Yeah. 
yeah what 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 Lance said I mean there's um there have been plans for <laughs> plans for trade it sounds like a typical indie thing to say and then you know indie tend to finish the trade like a week before release or so but um now I've been doing I've been meaning to do a trailer for uh for a while now but we we keep iterating on the gameplay so much that there's really no um no point at which it was set enough that I felt com or that we felt confident uh enough to make a trailer out of it um after this sprint though, because uh, this sprint is kind of one of its goals is to have a vertical slice that we can show to investors and publishers. So after this sprint, we have to have uh, a trailer. Like there's no other other choice because we can't we can't go to a, a publisher or uh, investor without a trailer so um, but then you know this sprint will last another number of weeks it's uh, oh, right it's gone there I just realized <laughs> um, let's switch off my private stuff this sprint will last another one, two, three, four, four weeks. And after that, um, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get, I'll make sure that the trailer is part of, of that sprint. So, um, that's another, like a sprint you, for us lasts two months, two months. So somewhere in that in that time period, there should be uh, there should be a trailer. I mean, you you could just um, I know wait you can yeah just look on my YouTube channel and there's uh, some of my older uh, streams on there, and I usually play the game a couple of times in a uh, in a stream, so. If you really just want to see what the gameplay is like, I suggest you, uh, you take a look there. Okay. So there's the hand and the, the mallet. Shameless plug. <laughs> Forward to the new Shrek. Retold video coming out on YouTube. I know. Probably not. <laughs> I'm not even sure what it is, but considering Shrek was a funny movie, but I've never really understood the the immense hype it got, it got in the in the meme space. Um, so yeah, no. Not 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 too excited, no. Let's see. Um, we'll do his helmet sunken into the ground. So I mean, these are a bit big. I mean, in the actual scene, this should be probably something like this big. Uh, But I mean, or you know, they could be not not in the way of uh, the other. Yeah, just keep drawing at this scale. So, do I want to do like half a sunken torso? With his head st coming out around here. Just 
out of the shoulder. Or do I want to do the, you know, just his head sticking out at an angle? That's an annoying song. It's gonna okay. Okay, um, if you're just gonna be here and plug your shit, dude, okay, uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna get rid of you, dude. So, uh, thanks for joining. See you never, I guess. Oh, I can do a timeout. There we go. Oh, that was easy. Yeet. Get out of here. I mean, I wonder why someone would come onto a channel that has seven viewers to promote his bullshit Shrek project, right? <laughs> like. Alright. Um. Unless it was one of my students who was actually hype about a Shrek remake thing, but I mean, come on. I think I'm gonna do the like his actual half shoulder thing sticking out of the ground and maybe put it over here somewhere to make it go. What? Hey! Excuse me. <clears throat> God. Check this out. I just got. I wonder if this shows up at all. The best snack. It's like chocolate covered yogurt with a bunch of fruit under there. And I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm just gonna eat this right now. Because it's absolutely amazing. All right. I was still kind of flabbergasted. Somebody came onto a, or maybe it was a bot. Who just kind of goes around in the, uh, in certain channels and plugs this bullshit. So I couldn't see an actual person uh, you know, picking my stream to plug some shit in because it's because we have very few viewers, right? So I'm just kind of looking at, you know, 
what it looks like in 2D and try and translate that into uh, more 3D. I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna concern myself with having super clean perspective in there. Um, I just wanna see what it looks like. Mm. That was so good. All right. Well, it might be nicer to have them turned towards us a bit more. Um, because now it's a bit like it's all within this one box and it'd be nice if there was a bit of a, a curve to it. But I mean, if if and when Victor makes a 3D model out of this, we can look at the placement again, right? So now just kind of to here to provide Victor with options, I guess. Let's do something like one of these boots sticking out for a bit and then I'll paint some colors over it let's have the tip sticking out of here as well Sorry, keep hitting that mic. Mm. Yeah, like Lance said, they kind of um, they have an impact on the gameplay. As in, so we have a a, a tile destruction system where um, the tiles that the world is built up out of. Put down the food. Um, so let me take you guys to a different scene. So our world is built up of these roadblocks, right? And during gameplay, they, um, they fall down that, or actually they, they sort of explode. 
uh, and then fall down and then ev every anything that's on top of that um, that block will be destroyed as well um, we might actually have the weapons of the gods um, make an appearance there like it's 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 physically being smashed excuse me but for instance by his hammer or uh you know by one of the um this one might use his feet this guy has these really large leg shin things that might just come down and and, and hit it um that guy is a hammer and that's why i added a, a weapon to this guy later or sketched it out at least i haven't really rendered it yet um so that they all have something to like poke at a tile with or destroy a tile with and uh, but that's you know something that we might integrate in a uh, in a subs subsequent uh, sprint I want to do some painting. some of these colors. It's funny how the this scene ended up with pretty much the exact same colors. Like this is actually a color that I used when I painted this guy. And this is not is the other one. And they're so close to the colors that are as they are now being used in the scene. I mean, obviously, I brightened this scene out a bit, but the U is very similar as well. Quickly get a base color in there. the lines
And now we just render, 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 I guess. And I'm not going to make this super rendered. Um, just enough to kind of define shape. That's facing the light source straight on, right? So that'd be... have a brush for little clumps of grass that I stole from I mean got from Utha oh, yeah Switch on some color variants there. Not quite it, is it? I guess I'll stick to my own brushes. Like I said, sometimes when I'm painting, I kind of forget to talk about things. Um, so if at any point you have any questions or, or whatever, just be sure to just put them in the in the chat and I'll take a look over there from time to time. So right now I'm just kind of rendering out some stuff like that. It's nothing too interesting going on. Didn't really to talk about. 
Um, See if there's any secondary light sources in there. I mean, we've got some light coming from this tree, I guess. We can use that to have at least some light on this thing, or else, because it's facing away from the main light source. So it should be like completely dark, but that's uh, not very handy, is it? Get it? Handy, because I'm painting a hand. Quality jokes on stream. Just grab some more of that fruit. See if we can introduce like some color with that plant growing out there, or else it's going to be uh, blue on blue on blue, which is a bit boring. Maybe this plant is a cousin of that tree thing here. Which also gives us a very nice little little light source here.
Nah. That's bullshit. Let's put three one. Some catches of that bite on that thing. All right. I wish I could play some music on stream, um, but uh, it's a uh, weird time right now to be a streamer. With all, well, that's not weird time to be a streamer. That's bullshit. I mean, it's just not a handy time to try out playing music on Twitch right now. Considering it's not too clear whether or not they'll just mute your stuff now or if they'll um, they'll actually send you a uh, give you an, an actual warning and there's like rumors of if you get too many warnings, you get kicked off Twitch. <laughs> it's like so weird. So, you know, that's why I'm
of being more careful now with that. And there's a lot of like I have a Mad Cats um playlist that is rights free. Um which I could play, but then I would ha also have to listen to that music myself, and I just do not like it. <laughs> not at all. And last time I had a um, one of those YouTube channels that uh, that plays this this chill out music. Um, I had it playing on my stream very quietly and I still got some uh, some muted parts of my video and a, a, a copyright warning so yeah yeah that makes sense I mean so that that's how I do, right? I just play my own music whenever I watch a streamer. Uh just play my own music a bit quieter than uh than the stream's voice, but yeah, there's people were telling me to play music on stream <laughs> basically. Uh but uh no, it didn't didn't work out for me, so Um, yeah, let's continue to this guy here. So there's a bit more work in here. Some dark shadows. And some less dark shadows.
must be interesting to see us chat. <laughs> um, I have to go and grab my switch real fast and just to check out how it handles keyboard input and um, multiple players on local multiplayer. So I'll be right back. How's that for a fancy transition? <laughs> um, okay, I'll grab my switch. Um, I guess we can do, Lance suggesting we do the character names. Um, I'm absolutely fine with that. Uh, let's see, what's a different game? Um, not too sure how many, how, how for instance, um, Mario Tennis does it. Uh, I think they also do the character names. Ryan said that Mario Kart also does the character names. So I guess there's a president for that in um, on the Switch. So Okay, let's see. Uh, that's tennis. Definitely also grab the the opportunity here to uh, make me a quick copy. All right, let's see a uh, free play. Two players. Take these out. I wish this was a way to uh, show you guys what I'm doing with these controllers and stuff, but um, let's 
that's one. That's two. Done. Yeah, sure. Mario versus Luigi, fine. Whatever. Start match. Yeah, so it's just character names. Just Mario versus Luigi. Like, not even the player one gets their um, gets their their profile name in there. It's just pure character names. Okay. Now, I'd love to be able to check how a other indie game does that or a, a non-Nintendo game because Nintendo obviously has a vested interest in uh, yeah or Lance is saying that on on the the discord right now like um, the characters are part of their branding so you know they like to have you associate those characters uh, or you know they like to show off those characters in a, in a sense um, just wondering how Snipper Clips does it, but I don't have that one, but Lance does. I'm gonna ask him. Ask him how Snipper Clip does it, because he has that game on his. Uh... Yeah, okay, cool. He's gonna check that out. Uh, meanwhile, we can continue with our, uh, with our little painting here. To make that slow it a bit more interesting. Snipper Clips doesn't have any names at all. Interesting. That is an interesting approach. <laughs> So they do color coding? Okay.
I haven't done like straight up digital painting in a while, which is why I wanted to do it today. Um, kind of afraid I would lose my <laughs> like lose my um, ability to do it. I guess. I mean, I've still been drawing, like on uh, on paper, doing sketches and designs, but just straight up digital painting. I can't remember the last time I did a a rendered piece. It's just pretty much everything I do now for is for uh, is for yellow cake. Don't really do personal pieces anymore either, I think. I mean that there's a very obvious reason for that, because every time I you know, I work on something, I can I can just, you know, work on something that I uh, kind of enjoy working on. And then, you know, that will not translate to anything or that, that won't turn into anything. Or I can work on something that I also will enjoy working on. But it'll also, you know, maybe make it into a video game, which is uh, pretty cool. Okay, so Bomberman just has different characters that you can that you can pick that doesn't have any player names at all. That's very interesting. Hey, that's the doorbell. I think my girlfriend will get it. Just take that off. I mean, I guess we don't have to reference the specific players because we have a, um, the only place you see their names is in the victory screen. And in that screen, we can just have the character names and then that also cements those characters into, um, you know, into our, our, our players' minds. I guess so. I'd be I'd be for I'd be in favor of uh, just having character names in there. Also, because it means I don't have to design a uh, a name input UI, <laughs> which is uh, uh, yeah, that just sucks, man. I don't want to do that. Oh, uh, thanks, uh, Pringles man. Or, uh, yeah. Okay. So character names then. Let's have the bottom piece of his helmet also having snapped off here. Let's 
just make that catches the light here on that little flower that we have. And then maybe there's something under there. We don't really have to define what it is. There's just, you know, stuff there. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed just uh, watching me noodle along on this painting here. Um, I know it's... Uh, I'm not talking a lot. There's there's really not much to talk about. Um, so this process is just kind of automatic here. Um, just kind of thinking about... So, for instance... I guess there is some stuff to talk about <laughs> on this shoulder here. Um, I keep removing parts here because I remember I just started with a uh, with a block, right? Just like a straight up like a square like that. Um, and now I kind of want to have a certain line in this entire composition and also for this one to have some interesting shapes in there. So I just keep removing anything that um, makes that silhouette too, too blocky. Um, especially because we don't, we're, we're not really constrained to, um, you know, what, what it would actually look like because you know any any time we remove something that part could have just fallen off <laughs> right so all we have to think about is okay does it still communicate the um, the mass of the of the of the object and uh you know do do we like the 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 silhouette speaking of which it might actually want to have this one um, skewed like that a bit a slightly more interesting angle in there nope nope actually that not a good tweak maybe I'll rotate it a bit yeah that's better actually That's better. I'm going to add a little. But there's a bit there. Cool. Oh, yeah, I haven't gotten to the left of his mask yet. Because also, this is still line art here, right? Um. I'm still working on this bit here. Uh, but yeah, I won't forget. <laughs> Thanks.
Yeah, I'm kind of like, I am going all over the place with this stuff. Uh, kind of going back and forth. There's basically any, anywhere you see like a hard line, like this bit, obviously. Um, it's still being being worked on. But I'll, 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 I'll reduce your stress and reintroduce his eye. mistake this music at some point Spotify decided uh, to, like I'm in the radio for this playlist now but it's it's not quite understanding it doesn't quite understand the <laughs> the vibe uh, it's supposed to go for. Huh? Right. Um, Right, shouldn't over render this actually because it's just a piece of concept art. I do kind of want to post it on uh, on Twitter later. Maybe get some. Uh, get some reactions. Bounce light in there. Same for this one. Catch. We'll just increase the contrast in this bit here. 
Really? That is damn close to the background color. Holy shit. Okay. Um, all right, we'll have to keep it. Can I? Yeah, that is not contrasted to the background at all. To keep it like that, I guess. Yeah. Maybe we'll have it catch some strong light. Back there. Yeah, it's fine. Does that god have a little party hat? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, it's a uh, it's his symbol. <laughs> they all have a symbol, and I guess his it does look like a party hat. Now it can never be unseen. Thank you, Internet Patron, for putting that in my brain. Now I can never unsee that. <laughs> Stay from Pijnacker, I'm guessing, by your account name. I wish one day to get people on my stream who aren't my students. But until that day and after that day, you guys are welcome guests. Out a bit. Just to signify that there are shapes there, but it's too dark to to make them out exactly. Maybe we breaks up the silhouette a bit there. I will just suggest some some grass here. There we go. Onto the boot. There's a snake in my boot. Oh. Now I remember why I don't really paint that much anymore. My shoulders. I actually wanted to so, God, Wacom is a ripoff. Uh, so I have one of these um, Cintiqs, right? So there's a, it's like a monitor that is also a drawing tablet. Um, but all it has are these shitty little, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, these shitty little paw, like feet at the bottom. Uh which only raised it up like by 20 degrees. So working on it, which is why my webcam is so low because I, I have to sit like this when I, uh, when I work on it. So if my webcam were to be on top of my screen, you'd just be looking at the top of my head all the time, which is interesting, but you know, not as interesting as my face. Um, but now there's a new stand coming out like a, a, a thing that'll let me raise it up to about this high so I can work like this. And it's it's basically like a, a, a bracket with a couple of settings and it snaps into the back of the, of the Wacom. That fucking thing costs 100 euros uh, or 120 or something. Which is bullshit because that's almost ex as expensive as an entire 
a new tablet like well not like a, a as expensive as a Cintiq but the Intuo series is about 150 euros if you get a good deal on one so having to pay 120 just for the stand for one of these is absolute absolutely rip off um but then on the other hand physical therapy is really expensive too <laughs> uh, so i might have to i mean i don't I, I want to try and make um, a bracket myself that will snap into a ergotron, which is a an arm that can hold monitors in place and it's really sturdy, so you can actually put some pressure on it. Um, but you know, building one of those is another is another project, and I've got so many such a ridiculous amount of projects and things that I have to do that I don't know if I'm ever gonna have the time to uh, to do that but yeah all right onto the foot and then um, for the last hour or so I think I'll work on um, Lance just asked me if I could make a new camera for the character creation menu. Um, I have to look at the entire join scene situation and the camera set up there anyway. Well, I have to do this at the end. Um, so then I can make a new camera for the for the character creation too. Like a, a narrow point like this would probably break off, but it makes the silhouette so much nicer that I don't want to. Maybe I'll just have it hanging on for dear life. Hmm. No, then it seems even less likely that it would still be there. I'll use one of these. Oops. So there needs to be a fairly smooth gradient here. And then this goes inward. Oop. Like that.
Maybe I'll have this entire segment just sunken down a bit more than the rest of the boot. There we go. All right. That looks pretty cool. I think, at least. I hope it looks cool. <laughs> Not too bad for... I have no idea how long I've been working on this. <laughs> Not too bad for X amount of time work. Um, Um, let's see, there's some biz about the camera for the, hold on, let me read this real quick, uh, there's a bit about the camera for the character creation, 
actually until the yeah I just have to make a camera I don't actually have to position it correctly but until the, the join scene is actually done there's no real reason to put it in a very specific s spot yet I think I just have to make a so we're using um, sorry uh, we're using Cinemachine cameras so I think I could just make a virtual camera and have I done this already? might have done this already Hmm. Wait, the subjects are here. Oh, it must be. No. Oh. Interesting. Um. So I think I could just make a virtual camera, and then have a cinema machine. Um, transpose to this one like I believe that's all it is but I'll figure it out when I'm not streaming because I don't like to work on stuff that I have to research heavily into while I'm streaming because then it's just you know you guys looking at me read documentation for 10 minutes or <laughs> watch a tutorial for half an hour so um, that wouldn't be very interesting uh, to watch the, the the tutorial might be interesting, but you know, then you might as well just look at it yourself. Uh, so I think I'll work on that next week. Um. Oh, some news. We are. Joining um, Ludum Dare, Ludum Dare, because it's Latin and it's not Ludum Dare, um, this weekend. So there, we won't be working on Dashing Dodgems tomorrow with uh, with Yellow Cake, because um, the we're hosting the we're doing the 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 game jam at my house. So I need tomorrow to prepare for the other two guys coming over. Um, because my desk, which is in my bedroom now, has to be moved to my living room, and I have to set up space there so we can all work there. You know, set up the switch, the um, the network switch, not the the game console, uh, and stuff like that. Set up probably a streaming setup there so we can stream actually live stream probably like large parts of the entire um, game jam process. Um, so I'll get to work on the camera next week, Thursday morning, before I start streaming, so that you guys don't have to suffer through uh, through me looking at tutorials for hours. Um, and then in the afternoon, I might do um, some of my other tasks. Let's see what else we have. What we have left, actually. Oh yeah, the loading screen. I might work on that next week during the stream um might do some texture painting um victor and i are kind of figuring out a lot of stuff about the 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 art style right now so um before i really get into that and start doing production work we have to figure that stuff out first um, or i might do some some of the character work though also there i'm I kind of want to wait until we're a bit more set on how we're going to approach that before I do production work. Because now I have a test for this one standing by until the test has been done. So I kind of want to wait for that test before I continue working on those. And then for this one, I kind of want to have a, um, a bit of a meeting about it uh, with Victor before uh, continuing. So I'm waiting 
go with that. And then I think the loading screen is something that I can do on stream without needing anything from anyone else next week. And then we'll just uh, continue doing some painting work for the stream this week. And I think I'll stop streaming in about, let's say, 45 minutes. I think I should be able to... Uh, To keep you guys entertained for that long, hopefully. Um, I think I'm going to put one of the other gods in there, and you guys get to decide which one. So, this is A, B, C, D, and E. This guy doesn't exist anymore. Which one should I stick into the ground next? While I wait for that. Just grab some rocks. Stuff here that I might be useful here. It would just be bones. I'd like to see you draw that. All right. Well, I mean, he is a god. So maybe he doesn't doesn't decay. Just looking at some shape stuff here. All right. <laughs> okay. B, that's this guy, right? We might want to paint his weapon first, by the way. That might actually also be a... Because uh, he doesn't have one yet. And I should be able to like throw that out quite, quite quickly. This is make his weapon match his color scheme, right?
Okay, that should be the general shape of it. So there's like darker piece in there. That's oh, actually not even darker. That's too dark. That's that's pretty much it. Up. Wrong shortcut. I don't like it. Um, Actually, the light is coming from top left, right? Yeah. There we go.
Maybe we should do some um, like runes on that. Uh, that's the wrong lasso tool. On that straight bit. To make it slightly less uh, uninteresting. I am not allowed to transform this for some reason. Okay. Hello? Okay. okay, that's so weird. Wait, is okay. Sorry about that. Forgot about this. It absolutely has to be a diamond. That would also make it a light source. That would make it glow on there as well. I'll get back to that later. Let's do this bit first. Sometimes it amazes me how full-fledged programs sometimes don't have the features that like mobile apps or, or tablet apps have. So for instance, Procreate um, for the iPad has a time-lapse function just built in. Just anything you paint in Procreate, I believe, 
Um, it's automatically also saved as a time lapse. So you can kind of export that um, and show it off on social media and, and what have you. Um, in Photoshop, to set that up would be like an absolutely atrocious amount of hassle. Um, for some reason. Which uh, is kind of weird, in my opinion, because... Uh, You know, if 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 a mobile app can, or a uh, a tablet app has the capacity to do those things, then why it's a full fledged piece of software doesn't you know have to make it so hard? I mean, I understand that like the functional reasons why. Don't get me wrong, I know why the the Adobe software team working on the. Um, on Photoshop probably either never thought of it or, or doesn't want to spend the time working on a system like that. I can can understand that they'd rather work on because they're they're coming out with some really cool stuff for Photoshop in the uh, in the next release. Um like a uh a lot of changes and, and improvements to content aware fill Actually, that's for for Premiere as well. Actually, I want to draw it back to that and make a little selection here. Um, where you now have it's actually also kind of creepy because uh, content aware fill for video is coming out soon, and um, that means that you know you can just delete someone from a video or delete something from a video. That coupled with software coming out soon that will allow you to, you know, project your, it's basically motion capture, right? You, you do motion capture of your own face and then make another face say those words. And you need about 30 seconds of footage uh, of the other person speaking for the algorithm to be able to map your your motion capture onto onto their face um which you know 30 seconds ain't that much especially with uh <laughs> with footage of politicians and stuff and uh yeah that's gonna be the next step in this age of fake news that we're in where you can't trust. I mean, if you can't, I mean, right now, anyone who spends any amount of time on the internet doesn't really trust. I mean, if you're smart, at least, uh, you don't really trust pictures anymore. Um, unless they've, they've been verified by a credible source. Because there are ways, thankfully, still to tell if a picture has been doctored. Um, Like there's agencies that can kind of um, verify if a picture has been through an image edit a piece of edit image editing software or if it's uh, straight out of a camera, for instance, um, or if something has been edited or replaced. But um, with video, that's a lot harder to, to look, kind of like verify those things. If at any point you guys get tired of my rambling on about fake news and all that. Fake news and all that. Um, just ask me <laughs> like an actual game dev or digital painting question. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, I'm just looking for subjects to talk about now. Also, I started the stream out tired. Let me tell you, 
streaming for a couple of hours did not do anything to improve that situation. I am more tired now. Um... What? <coughs> right, let's see how we can make this thing a bit more interesting. So I guess mm, it's a pretty simple weapon. Just a couple of lines. Yeah, let's make it look a bit stone-like like the other ones. And I forgot about line art, actually. I just started painting in here, but... Actually, a significant amount of line art that should have been on there. Late in the day. That's the excuse.
All right. That's not too bad. Let's toss some effects on there. Be a bit too nuclear. Something like that, right? Okay. Now at least we know what his weapon looks like. Um, I think I'll make a start on this one. Look at the get the sketch out, and then uh, I have to uh, call it a day on the on the painting because uh, them shoulders they do not feel right. <laughs> God, okay, I just got an email, uh, I kind of want to let you guys read it, or I want to read it out to you guys, because it's, it's the abs absolute type of bullshit that you can es expect <laughs> if you were to, uh, um, start a company, like, uh, like we have, hold on, let me just read this out to you guys, um, Dear Joram, first of all, I would like to express how impressed I am with your business. We haven't made any, any, any money with Yellow Cake Games yet, by the way. We're just, you know, three guys working two days in a week building a video game. But she's impressed with our business, so that's, that's cool. Okay, thanks. Um, I am amazed with Dashing Dodgins, and I think there really is a great potential for my company data web global group to provide you with a high quality services why us well since 2002 we have been providing quick reliable access to the highest quality content on the internet just the highest quality content i guess having three super pops and 30 cdn pops i don't know what those are currently we are working on launching points of presence around the world our experience in building content delivery networks has allowed us to create a high performance and scalable solution with affordable prices on the market. CDN migration from provider to provider is done within a couple of hours. We are setting up CDN, taking up consideration all your needs, help to launch this service on a turnkey basis and support it during work. Our te support team is there for you 24 seven and replies within 10 to 12 minutes to fix any issue. We can say with confidence that at the moment our download protection is one of the best available. You can secure your content through at least six different ways. Let us impress you. When it is when it is convenient for you to have a quick call this week or beginning of next week, that's not how you formulate a question, but I guess that's how they think you formulate a question. Looking forward to hearing from you. And then somebody's name. It's oh my god. Who could even take that serious? Yeah, right? It's, and I get about two or three of these a week, and so does Victor, and so does Lance. Like, especially on LinkedIn, they they, they just add you, um, and like on LinkedIn, I have this policy, I just accept anyone who, who sends me an invitation because they don't really do anything on LinkedIn. So, you know, having a bigger network there, 
doesn't really bother me because I don't see, you know, more posts come by. But they add you on LinkedIn as a connection, then they send you these messages. And then whoever this was, um, you can send me, I believe it's to my, I hope it's not to my private email, by the way. It is. So that's interesting. Because this isn't through, oh no, no, it's not. It's to my, uh, to my yellow cake email. Okay. <laughs> leave me alone right <laughs> okay um this guy let's see so we have So at some point it must have been a statue that um, that had stood here, right? So it had been like that, and then shoulders. Just one hand towards us. And just big belly. Let's do it at a bit of an app. Right. Drawing on the wrong layer. That happens to me so much. Um, let's do it at a slightly different angle, by the way. So, it have been there. For the other statue god thing, I had a very clear image in my head of uh, sort of what I wanted to do. I'm not, I don't have that with this guy. So... I kind of want to paint or do a sketch for for what he would have looked like um, bef before it got destructed. And then uh, we can take a look at, you know, how to destruct that. So there might have been a statue here. Something like that, and then head. Giant nose, big ear. Is that about? Yeah, it seems about right ish. As you guys might have noticed, I don't do things like um, perspective perspective grids and stuff. I should, I know I should, um, but I'm a very impatient person. Actually, that juts out from his body, just almost straight. Um, so I kind of never bother to. And then hand, and then that one coming towards us. Slightly more towards it. There we go. Um, I 
But I always say, you know, do as I say, not as I do. So use perspective grids. It really... really does help a lot. Could have saved me a lot of time on the... Uh, kind of messing around here. And also, I mean, if you do it the way that I do it, you kind of assume that you're eyeballing it right. Right? You're, I'm, I'm depending on my on my eye to get these these angles right and that's very dangerous because um, your eye is very inaccurate um, and it will deceive you whenever it can but I mean for this it doesn't really matter that much because this isn't the the thing I'm gonna be painting right I just kinda wanna look at what it would have been like um, had it still been a solid statue and then, you know, I'm going to do an actual painting for the, for the broken down version. So, okay. So this is kind of, um, the angle here. So I guess if that were to just fall down flat. It will be there, and then maybe still have a hand and a bit of the sleeve attached. I think I might actually leave this as a like a single column because it's so. And then just take his head off, put that in the dirt somewhere. With that funky ear that angles up. There we go. And then maybe like take the bottom of his arm off. And just take this bit off. Though it would make more sense for this to break off at the sleeve. Right? So that's at, at this bit here, because that's a narrow bit. Let's see, these lines, they go. See, this is what, if I just made a perspective grid straight away, it would have given me this information that now I kind of have to figure out. So if this is almost a straight line perpendicular to his chest, then in perspective that would be something like that. And then it goes follows the line of his belly and goes down towards his belly but it ends up way higher than that it kind of goes like that and then stops about halfway down his belly and feet I know to you guys this just looks like a mess of scratches <laughs> Um, but this is how I kind of like figure out things like this. I'll just keep it very messy. Um, that doesn't seem right at all though. Okay. Let's say we have, oh, right. I forgot about his neck. That's a bit of a distance. So that's actually down here. But we do have foreshortening. Bloody hate perspective. Like I, I would almost just 
make the entire guy in 3D, drop him down into the scene, uh, and then paint on top of that. Just to not have to figure this stuff out, because there's, so there's a slope in there that I'm not taking into account. And then it just comes out straight, goes down, and goes into his belly. Something like that. And that marks 4.30. So I'm going to end the stream right there. Um, we'll work on this guy a bit more next week. Because, um, well, I won't work on it yet tomorrow because I'm, I'm prepping for uh, for Lunar Dare. Um, so you guys will be able to see me just pick up Pretty much exactly where I left off today, uh, tomorrow. Um, so I get, I mean, I could just also just put him in the same, no, we'll make separate scenes. Um, yeah, in the meanwhile, thank you guys for watching. Um, uh, thank you for your input, uh, Pringles man, Mark. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. Later.